In this Learning Byte for Windows Small Business Server 2011 Standard, we'll take a quick look at the SBS console. So here on the home page, we can see that the console is organized into three major areas. We have the menu bar across the top, the task pad, and the network essential summary, which gives you a snapshot view of the health of your network environment. This is broken into the security, updates, backup, and other alerts categories, and shows you a green check of health if everything is okay. It will give you a yellow warning or red critical errors if there's something that needs attention in the environment. In the task pad, you'll see the getting started tasks immediately after installing SBS, and you can use this as a checklist of items that need to be taken care of to get the server up and running and tailored to a particular environment. Generally speaking, the tasks should be performed in order, and the checkboxes can be used to simply track your progress. Once the getting started tasks have been completed, you can reference the frequent tasks and community links. This gives you a quick way to jump to all the typical tasks that you would do on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as providing some links to resources available on the internet. The next tab across the menus along the top is the Users and Groups tab, which is broken into three sub-tabs. In the Users sub-tab, you can see all the users in your environment, as well as different tasks that relate to managing user accounts. When you select an individual user, you can see tasks specific to that user account. You can also view the user roles, which are like templates that you use when you're creating new user accounts to give them a set of default properties that you have established. Finally, the Groups sub-tab shows you the different email and security groups that you can use to organize your users and to control access to resources in the SBS environment. On the Network tab, we can see, again, three sub-tabs showing the computers, devices, and connectivity areas. On the Computers tab, we can see all the servers and client PCs in the network. Again, in the Tasks pane, we have computer tasks that apply to all computers in the environment. And then if you select an individual computer, you can see tasks that are related to that one computer. In the Devices sub-tab, we can see the fax and printer devices, and again we see a list of device tasks that you can perform. On the Connectivity tab, we can see the major components that relate to connecting to and interacting with the Internet. We can see the status of the Internet connection, your Internet domain name, web server certificate, firewalls, VPN configuration, the POP3 connector, and internet email settings if your ISP can be configured to be used as a smart host. Again, on the right-hand side, we have various connectivity tasks, including the Fix My Network wizard, which is a very powerful wizard that can help you get your network working again if any problems develop. The next menu item is the Shared Folders and Websites area. This has two sub-tabs, including the Shared Folders and then the Websites. Here we can see the different shared folders that have been configured for the SBS environment. And again, if we highlight a specific shared folder, we can see tasks relevant to that folder as well as general shared folder tasks. In the Website sub-tab, we can see the different websites that comprise the SBS environment, including Remote Web Access, Outlook Web Access, and the internal website Company Web. Just as before, when we select an individual website, we see tasks that are related to that specific site. On the Backup and Server Storage tab, we can control and configure the backup, including individual tasks related to a given backup, as well as general backup tasks. On the Server Storage sub-tab, we can see the different drives that have been configured for the SBS server and see what data is being stored on each of those drives. The Reports tab is used to define and view the different health reports that the SBS server generates so that you can see the status of the SBS server. These can be scheduled to be generated on a daily or weekly basis and can be emailed to internal and external recipients. Finally, we have the Security tab, which again has multiple sub-tabs. On the Security tab, we can see, again, a green health check if everything is okay in the environment. We'll also see warning and critical alerts if there are any security issues that need to be addressed. And finally, on the Update sub-tab, we can see if there are any updates that need to be deployed throughout the SBS environment, including both the servers and the clients. In this test pane, we can go ahead and change our software update settings as well as force a synchronization with the Microsoft Update Services, although this is generally performed automatically on a daily basis. So that's a quick overview of the SBS console. I hope you found this Learning Byte helpful, and I hope to see you for future Learning Byte videos.